Fallout 4 is one of my favorite games of 2015. I recently beat this game and I played in a pretty particular manner. Oh boy, here I go killing again. In 2016, I wanted to see if I could beat this game being a pacifist. Now the intent of this playthrough is to try and get through this game without hurting anyone or killing anyone. If someone has to die to progress the story, we're going to try and do it in the most humane way possible. So right off the bat, I need to decide what does my character look like. Now there are a number of historical figures that would fit this type of playthrough. Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, or just a few. This is my character. I decided to model her after my favorite celebrity, Paula Deen, and my favorite insect, a praying mantis. The vault tech person comes by and I need to name my character and allocate my special points. I go with the name Lady Labrador, it really kind of captures her essence. So I distribute the special points accordingly. And we'll talk about this in another episode. In the year 2077 in the Fallout universe, a nuclear apocalypse happens. Currently, you are running for shelter in one of the vault tech vaults with your spouse and your baby boy. Before we continue, let's take a moment and admire the beauty that is Lady Labrador. Ugh, she is quite something. Now each vault has an ulterior motive in a sense. This vault 111 cryogenically freezes its subjects. And this is pretty important to the story. Two mysterious figures come and take your child while also shooting your spouse in the face. This is the catalyst that starts the story of Fallout 4. In this game you are trying to find your baby boy. It mirrors the story of Fallout 3 in the sense that in that game, you are trying to find your father. Getting out of the cryogenic tube is where the pacifist playthrough truly begins. There are a number of villages in this beginning area that teach you the combat system of Fallout 4. I believe the Vadroach lives matter, so I will not be hurting or harming any of them. Running past them is probably the most efficient way of avoiding combat. This is where I run into my first problem. I can't pick up this pit boy because of these rad witches attacking me. To solve this problem, I trap rad witches into separate rooms. After that, I hide in the corner until I drop aggro, which then gives me the opportunity to pick up the pit boy and finally leave the vault. There are a few articles of clothing that I need before I can continue my adventure. Namely, a laundered green dress or a laundered blue dress, a newsboy cap, and fashionable sunglasses. All in all, with all of these things, they give me a plus 4 to my charisma. For experience, I'm mainly going to be discovering locations. Ideally, I would want to finish this quest with Codsworth, but if I follow him around the neighborhood, then there's some rad witches that I have to run into. Instead, I'm just going to run around and discover as many locations as I can in the area. Inside this ranger's cabin, there is a laundered green dress, which is perfect. Leaving this place proved to be troublesome. Out my way, son! Stop! 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 Please! After discovering a number of locations, I finally hit my level 2 in Lexington. With my first point, I take Idiot Savant, which gives you an opportunity to get 3 times EXP from any action. <laughs> I make my way towards Diamond City, discovering locations along the way. I hit my level 3 at Backstreet Apparel, and I take my next perk, which is Lone Wanderer. This decreases the damage that you take by 15% while increasing your carry weight by 50. Once I make it to Diamond City, I immediately leave and come back after waiting an appropriate amount of time. This initiates a tiny event that helps us get one more article of clothing. Don't move, Sim. What have you done with the real Riley? Where's my brother? 
I swear, I'm not a synth. Don't shoot, for God's sakes, we're family! Put the gun down, now! He's a synth! He'll kill us all! Kyle, no! Okay, show's over. There are no synths in Diamond City, hear me? Just you folks and your damn paranoia. Even though Kyle's face got absolutely obliterated, we can still grab his newsboy cap. With the newsboy cap, and laundered green dress, and fashionable glasses, we have attained all the articles of clothing that we were looking for. This puts our charisma at 7. One of the benefits of playing as a pacifist is seeing some of the details that Bethesda put into the game. While grabbing the fashionable glasses from Backstreet Apparel, I was able to listen to a rather interesting Raider story. I'll end the episode with that. Hope you guys like the episode. See you next time. That was a good one. Do you have any more stories like that? How much time you got? <laughs> yeah, I have a few. Let me see. A couple years back, before I met Clutch, me and a couple friends found a young kid on the north side of the Charles. He wasn't that young probably around 18 or so. Anyway, after hanging out with him for a while, it started to get dark, so I built a fire. I kid you not. As soon as I lit the first match, the kid screams, what are you doing? And knocks the match out of my hand. He knocked the match out of your hand? Why'd he do that? Shh, I'm telling a story. So, yeah, he knocks the match out of my hand. I was so surprised that I swung and broke his nose. He said he was sorry. And get this, he said he was afraid of fire. Oh man, he was afraid of fire? I just told you he was afraid of fire. You keep interrupting me, it's irritating. As soon as he told me that, I thought of something. I quickly apologized for hitting him and told him it's nothing to be ashamed of. That night, me and the others got this kid so drunk so fast, he passed out within an hour. We then dragged him to the banks of the Charles. We also dragged six or seven mattresses and tied them in a circle with one in the middle. Mattresses? What did you need the mattresses for? Really? Did you seriously just ask me that question? It's a goddamn story! All you have to do is listen. So yeah, we tied all these mattresses together, and then we placed one mattress in the middle and put the kid on it. We doused all the mattresses with gas, except his, and then lit them on fire and pushed them down into the water. We followed the burning mattresses down the river, laughing our asses off waiting for the kid to wake up. After five minutes, we realized the kid wasn't going to wake up, so we all started throwing rocks at him. After a couple of hits, the kid's awake. At this point, the flames were huge. <laughs> Imagine what it must have been like for him, waking up, not knowing where he was, and all he sees is fire. The kid tries to stand up, but can't get his footing on the soggy mattress. At this point, I'm laughing so hard I fall down. That is crazy! I bet he overcame his fear of fire. Huh? Trial by fire? Nah, he never did. Turns out the kid couldn't swim. Anyway, that's that. Didn't see that coming.